last month i made a video on ninth from venus which tells us what is the circumstances that uh, taught us what is a relationship or what kind of training did we get from our childhood or from our parents or from anybody from that planet which is in your ninth house from your venus not from your ascendant wherever venus is ninth from there but somebody told me that this is a great video indeed no problem but that's past we can't change it <laughs> so we need to now go into the future and see how will we behave and that is absolutely a very good approach and that is why today we are going to discuss not ninth we are going to discuss yes the future which is the fifth house from venus so wherever your venus is five houses away from it okay there you go welcome back to exotic astrology and if you're new to the channel then please uh, subscribe to it and please watch the other videos in this playlist and if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down below in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him even if there are no planets in your fifth from venus <laughs> okay so uh, this one uh, question which somebody asked in the last video what if there is no planet in the ninth or fifth from venus well use your common sense we have to check where that ninth lord or the fifth lord is sitting okay so coming back to today's video wherever your venus is five houses from this you have to understand what is the fifth house the fifth house is the most important house in the horoscope. Should I repeat? The fifth house is, it was, it will be, and it is the most important house in the horoscope. Why? Because that's the reason why we live. Fifth house is the sun. It's Leo. It's the sign which tells you that you exist in this world. That is the house which gives us a desire to live, to continue in this world. Day after day, year, year after year. <laughs> if the fifth house is good, then life seems to be worth living. And if the fifth house is not good, uh, you might not live, you might just exist. You know the difference between living and existing? Yes, because fifth house shows life, where there is life. It's the house of children. That's, that's life another person, human being is coming into existence. So do you feel that you have an existence in this world? Or do you feel that ah, it's just going? <laughs> so then you need to check your fifth house and you have to check how you can strengthen your fifth house, how you can do specific remedies and uh, specific mantras for the fifth house. If you feel that you're just, you're just existing like a dead body, there's there's nothing in your life that you look up to. This is fifth from the ascendant, fifth from Lagna. But that's not today's topic. But why did I tell you this? Because this same concept you can apply to today's topic, which is fifth from the Venus. Wherever your Venus is placed, go and check what's going on in the fifth house from there. That is the planet which will tell you how much life do you have within your relationships within your married life, okay? I won't call a uh, married life because that will be more of uh, the fifth from where the seventh Lord is placed. But because Venus is the natural significator of marriage, love, romance, relationships, uh, attraction uh, between the opposite sexes. So therefore you could also use this for marriage, but in general, uh, how much, how much, positivity do you have or what is your attitude when you uh, are in a relationship with somebody what what do you think uh, is a relationship what what are the things that you look up to within a relationship by which you can grow together okay otherwise people get into a relationship there's this honeymoon phase and very soon everything just <laughs> falls apart and then they are wondering why did we get into this relationship at the first place? Because uh, most of the people, they think that uh, the other person is a savior who is sent by God to fill the emptiness in our filthy, boring, disgusting, empty, lonely lives. All right. This is what everybody thinks. And this is the main reason why everybody gets into relationships, especially in Kali Yuga these days. Yeah? 
uh, hopping from one member to the other like dogs uh, very frequently of course every year every two years three years you know they are changing their partners like dogs okay why is this happening because they have no future when it comes to a relationship okay and when i'm talking of future i do not mean marriage here i'm not talking of longevity of the relationship i'm not talking of that i'm not saying that oh a couple had stayed 10 years together they were uh, in a relationship or they were married oh they had a fantastic life no and oh you know this poor couple they stayed only for 6 months you know so uh, they didn't have they had a lesser future no i'm not talking about that i'm not saying of the amount of days that you stay together just for the sake of staying i'm not saying that what i'm saying is what is the quality what what is that which you think you should be doing within your relationship okay with with the spouse because the uh, the modern concept of relationship and the vedic concept of uh, marriage is totally different there is zero similarity therefore when people try to uh, they try to draw parallels between the ancient times and today they are confused they are like oh why should i uh, just stay in a marriage if it is not uh, giving me happiness or something like because they have a very faulty idea of what is relationship or what is marriage they think uh, today's pe people of Kali Yuga today they think marriage or relationship ah what it is after all you need to stay together you need to have fun you know <laughs> and then once the fun is over then you have to see if you can settle in some kind of a compromise and uh, if that doesn't happen then you part ways right and there are these uh, so many people in YouTube I see, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, they say, you know, oh, if it's hurting you, you are not liking, it's uh, not giving you the higher potential, blah, 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 so many reasons, so many things, then you should separate, you should not stay together. This is what the people of Kali Yuga say. This is because they inherently think marriage is something uh, which is, uh, so they think that there is a void inside them. And the other person has to come and fill that. And the other person is not feeling that. Uh, well, then it doesn't make sense to stay with that person, right? But that's not what married life is. Because if you see in the Vedic context, uh, there were the men would go to the ashram in the uh, when when a boy was five years old, he would go to the ashram and he would take training under a guru and he would become um, he would have uh, that much sense control and he would stabilize his mind and consciousness and the same training the ladies would get in their homes okay through their mother or their elder sister or their grandmother or even even uh, the father also sometimes so in the vedic culture the concept was that everybody is made to be a self sufficient individual you don't need anybody to complete you if you need anybody to complete you and that's why you get married it will end up in a disaster doesn't matter if you stay for 100 years it just doesn't work okay that's just official detail because the society will spit in your face that is why you are staying together oh no what will uh, this my uncle say what will my auntie say Look, kya kahenge? Chacha kya bolenge? Chachi kya bolenge? <laughs> that is why you are staying but that doesn't mean you are married okay so therefore this concept applies in the modern day also but in a very perverted sense like therefore people keep asking me when will i meet my soulmate and then i ask them what how do you define a soulmate soulmate is one after whom when you meet that person your life will change and you will become happy suddenly you know out of nowhere that person is empty inside and then you are anyways empty so imagine two thirsty people meeting each other can they quench each other's thirst no they'll be in fact, what happens if two thirsty people meet? If there is a glass of water, then they start fighting with each other. No, no, I want this, I want this, I want this, okay? So two miserable people, when they are together, they will make each other more miserable than if they were separately, okay? So therefore, first of all, before going into all these fancy astrology concepts, before writing big, big things in the comments, you know, my Saturn Rahu is in fifth from Venus, what the hell is going to happen? Whichever planet is there in fifth from Venus, irrespective of that, you have to understand that the relationship which you are having or which you want to have or married life, whatever you call it, you can give a name that you wish, no harm in that. But that is not something which is going to complete you. That is not something which will heal you. 
you have to heal yourself you have the responsibility to do that no other person can come and heal you and if you are damaged inside and you get into a relationship then the damage will just spread all right so therefore this is a very important placement the planet which is in the fifth form venus because this planet actually tells you what kind of a outlook do you have for the future when you are in a relationship what do you think i should be doing in the relationship where should i be going okay so generally it is seen that if the ninth lord from the ascendant ninth lord from the ascendant is in fifth from venus if it is uh, present and the overall chart is very harmonious for spiritual progress then it is uh, observed many times that after uh, after getting married the person's spiritual life uh, booms okay not necessarily internally but externally they meet sadhus and they meet a lot of associates or if the 11th lord is in the fifth from venus then it is seen that now the friend circle increases okay but if it is in debility then that friend circle can pull you into uh, wrong habits okay like drinking smoking and all this so yes and uh, if the seventh lord is uh, in the fifth from venus then it is seen that the uh, people they want to get married as soon as possible this is more probable compared to if the seventh lord is in the fifth or fifth lord is in the seventh okay so instead it is better to have the seventh lord in the fifth house from venus rather than having it fifth uh, rather than the seventh lord being in fifth from the ascendant okay uh, so you have to check what which houses these planets are ruling Okay, and if the lords of Dushthanas are sitting in the fifth from Venus, okay, then this this is like saying you want to spread misery once you get into a relationship, okay, which means if the sixth lord is in the fifth from Venus, then what happens sometimes if it is in a very bad shape, it is afflicted or something like this, then you want to uh, you want to continue fighting. You think the only reason. Uh, why you should get into a relationship is just to fight yes that's what happens if the eighth lord is there well uh, then it's eighth house can show control because eighth house is the house of inferiority complex so it's like a uh, cr criminal who is a victim of inferiority complex and why do i say criminal because this person who has inferiority complex is now trying to pull the spouse down that is why i say he or she is a criminal here okay but uh, if this is not there then the person uh, may not do so okay and uh, if of course the kendra lords are there uh, like the lord of the lagna fourth seventh or tenth is there in fifth from venus then it is seen that uh, people are very much uh, aggressively gearing towards uh, gaining more possessions in their material life you know like possess property or uh, getting the marriage registered or you know, gaining more finances or something like this that is also a good thing externally but which is the best thing to have in the chart which is the best planet to have in uh, the fifth from venus well it depends on the chart it's not such an easy question that you can just answer like this but in general if the trinal lords the fifth lord or the ninth lord is in the fifth from venus this is the best placement to have this is the best two planets if you have in the fifth from venus this can really work wonders for your married life and your relationships now if you have the fifth lord in fifth from venus or the ninth lord in fifth from venus and if you feel that uh, things are not working they are not that great as you expected well then you need to work on doing the remedies then definitely your situation will improve okay especially i have seen if the ninth lord is involved then the that's the best thing that you can have okay ninth lord of your lagna for example if you are a taurus lagna then saturn is your ninth lord he's placed in the uh, ninth from venus for example uh, fifth from venus for example this is the best thing to have because then what happens you get uh, you, you want to uh, elevate yourself along with your spouse together and go towards god uh, spiritually that that is the end purpose end goal of marriage because uh, if you see in the vedic context uh, this word vivaha is the used for marriage okay or i would say rather marriage is used for vivaha 
So the word Vivaha means uh, Vivaha. It's uh, Vishnu Vahan. Vishnu is he's the supreme god himself, and Vahan is a vehicle. So marriage is a vehicle where you both sit together and you go towards God. And within that journey, you uh, enjoy the materialistic pleasures which you have as per your both of your destiny. <laughs> And then you keep going ahead. Okay. So that is the meaning of vivaha. So when you say, oh, this is vivaha, it's not just two people going and signing or you, know, you, you invite uh, 5,000 people for your wedding. That's not vivaha. Vivaha means how do you know if two people are married at the end of the day after, after seeing 20 or 30 or 40 years of their married life? If you see both of them, they have uh, increased their spiritual commitments. Only then you know that they had a viva. Otherwise, they just had time pass, nothing else. Okay. They may have a very nice family. They may have the best of children. They may have the best romantic, best sex life, best finances, best reputation. If they have not advanced spiritually, they've simply wasted each other's time and they've simply cheated themselves. All right. And everybody else in their family also. <laughs> They have cheated their children, grandchildren, parents, grandparents, everybody, all right, because they were never married, okay. So, therefore, understand that uh, the planet in the fifth form, Venus, is very, very, very crucial, okay. And if you have malefics, like natural malefics or functional malefics, if the lords of sixth, eighth, twelfth from your lagna is in the fifth form, Venus, you explicitly need to take care that that does not become the focus of your life okay like eighth, eighth lord uh, 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 being in the fifth from venus okay don't become a crab and try to pull your spouse down if you pull them down you will not uplift yourself that won't happen anyways okay and of course it can happen the other way around also if the eighth lord is in the uh, fifth from venus and it is well placed it is exalted or it's in a great dignity. Then what can happen is you, you have the power to take your spouse out of inferiority complex and low self-esteem and self-doubt and all this. Okay. That could be a great placement. Okay. So don't stereotype everything and say, oh, eighth Lord is there in fifth from Venus. You know, my love life is ruined. No, it's not like that. Okay. And um, yeah, if, if, there are malefics, then also it depends on what dignity they have, okay? So if the malefics are well-placed, they are in a good dignity, then there may be some challenges which you encounter when you proceed ahead in your relationship or you get married, uh, when you think of a future with your spouse. But eventually, if you work on it, you will cross over them and you will obtain the uh, perfection of married life, provided you do spiritual practices together, okay? Unless you do that, it doesn't just doesn't matter which planet is in fifth from Venus. It's just a waste of time. You have just wasted your life and the life of your spouse. All right. So therefore, uh, don't waste your life and the life of your spouse. Do spiritual practices together. And only then you can claim that you are having a vivaha. Okay. Marriage is different. Marriage nowadays, it's just a contract. Nothing more than that. Okay. But... That's not what Vedic Vivaha is, okay? And don't compare it with contemporary India also. Contemporary India, there is hardly anything Vedic remaining there, okay? So in India, if you see that, oh, people are married from like, you know, 50 years, you know, they are this uh, holy couple which never separated, you know. It's not because they, they have elevated themselves, but it's just a moral obligation or pressure of the society, especially our generation of our parents, okay? So... We do not have to idealize uh, just staying, okay? The point is you have to understand what has happened after you have stayed. That is very important, okay? And at the same time, of course, the Vedas recommend that we stay with one spouse and not hop like animals, like dogs from one the other, all right? That is also not recommended, okay? That will be all from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments, then please write it down in the comment section. Then, and I'll be very happy to see them. I may not get time to answer, but if I feel some question is really burning, then I will definitely answer. All right. What is there with you all the time? Just look to him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation, my website is down below. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. Thank you very much.